Next, I want to invite up uh, Sarah Hunt and Lee Brimlow, and they're going to uh, give us an overview and a deep dive into Adobe Edge Animate. So Sarah and Lee. Uh, well, hello there. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, we have just been seeing such amazing things. I love that demo that uh, Vincent showed us earlier. I can never get how over how amazing everything is. Um, so my name is Sarah Hunt. I am the product manager for Adobe Edge Anime, and I'm here today with Lee Brimo, our developer evangelist. <laughs> yeah, and I'm here to tell you about uh, a tool that Adobe has been working on, which we've been hearing about today, called Adobe Edge Animate. Um, a little bit of history, up until about 2010, the use of uh, Flash was almost synonymous with creating animations on the web, primarily targeting desktop platforms. Uh, and then something changed. With the announce of the iPad, designers and developers were faced for a need to create plug-in-free interactive content on the web. Um, and so fortunately, around this time, we were blessed with the standards that we know today as HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Um, now, these have been around for a while, but combined, we can create really amazing interactive content, reducing the use of plugins or image-based effects on the web. So there are a few drawbacks of this. Um, when you, know, you start using these scripting languages, you get into this uh, process of having to code and then preview in the browser, having to code, preview in the browser, uh, and you get stuck in this loop, and it is time consuming. You know, it is plug-in free, but everything is hand-coded. It takes you a lot of time. And you do lose that benefit of visual authoring, something which Flash was really great at, uh, at providing users with. So historically, it has been quite painful. Um, you can see on this slide here, it takes me about 15 lines of code to create this graphic that you see on the side. Now, you could create this in something like Fireworks or Illustrator in a matter of seconds. And now if I want to go in here and add some more interactivity to this, I have to dig in, I have to write some more script, and then you know, it takes me several hours to do something which I might just, which visually I could do in a matter of minutes. Uh, so Adobe saw the need to allow web designers to easily create animated content on the web. And this is where Edge Animate comes in. Um, you can work seamlessly across uh, modern browsers and devices because we do work with the WebKit-based stage, and we do work natively with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You can create accessible content. And this has always been a big problem with the web when creating animated or dynamic content, is that the content you create, it gets stuck behind a plugin or it gets stuck behind a graphic, and uh, screen readers can't access it, Google can't access it. So with Animate, since we do work with HTML, your content is indexable and searchable, and if you're using a screen reader, no one gets left behind. Uh, we have the benefit of working with um, other amazing tools such as Flash Pro and, uh, and After Effects. And with their influence, we have been able to make a program that uses keyframe-based intuitive tooling, uh, which is something that most, of, um, that most uh, animators are familiar with today. And we help bridge that gap between creativity and code. So any, uh, any people who are graphic designers in the room or you consider yourself a web designer, I'm sure you've probably been faced with the challenge of creating this super amazing mock-up that you've done in Photoshop and Illustrator. You're super happy. You know how it's going to work. You go to your developer, and your developer tells you to take a hike because you create this beautiful thing that's going to take him forever to make. And the, they don't want to do that. Now you're crushed. You have to go back and revisit your workflow. Uh, so we really help enable designers bring their content to the web and add motion to the graphics without having to worry about being stuck behind a, a particular kind of framework or any, sort of, um, or any sort of constraints that the developer may have put on them. So these are some of the things that we have been working on with, uh, with Animate, you know, the program formerly known as Edge. We have released seven public previews, and with each preview, we have been able to create um, to deliver content to you guys with uh, amazing features. Um, so we have symbols. If you're familiar with Flash, then this is the exact same concept that you find in Flash Pro. And we've also allowed the option of symbol export. So you can create reusable symbol libraries, which you can share between users. Um, if you're on a server, you can upload them, and then the next person who work on your project can grab them. Uh, you can use web fonts. Um, I'm a big typography fan. During uh, Jeff Bean's session earlier today, I was just like, oh boy, oh boy, more, more fonts. We have such amazing stuff with web typography going on. And you can do all of that in Edge Animate. Uh, we use property-based keyframes. Um, and 
if you haven't used a tool before, we have this really great, great way of laying out all the properties where you can easily access everything that you apply to a keyframe. And we've also created this amazing new concept in Animate called the pin, which easily allows you to create keyframes, and it just saves you so much time when you're creating compositions. Uh, we have percentage-based layouts. We introduced this in Preview 7, so now you can create content, uh, content that will view any viewport that you, uh, that you assign to it. We have down-level support, because I'm sure there's many developers in the room that are just like, yes, but what about i7? Uh, it's unfortunate that this is something we still have to worry about, but it is a fact of life. Uh, we do have solutions for down-level support. You can use Google Chrome Frame to target IE 6, 7, and 8, or we do have what's known as a down-level stage, where you can bring in content, you can add links to it. It'll be a static version of the content you're creating for, uh, for modern browsers, but you do have an option of creating uh, an older browser experience there. We have a code editor, which allows you to dig in and edit all the code that you use in Edge Animate. Um, and along those lines, we do have interactivity using our own native Animate APIs. And since we do work with JavaScript, you can assign your, uh, your own code as well. And you can use, um, we have the same concepts of triggers, uh, labels, and actions, all those things that you might be familiar with with other scripting tools you can find in Animate. So who is Edge Animate for? Um, well, we have been able to create this unique balance between appealing to designers and developers alike. Uh, if you are a graphic designer and you don't want to look at code, that is totally fine. You can go into Edge Animate, bring in your assets that you have made in Photoshop and Illustrator, and you can add motion to your content right there on the stage. Uh, or if you are a developer, you can get your hands a little bit dirty with, co with code. And we do have uh, users ha that have been doing amazing stuff with custom libraries since we do use JavaScript. If you know JavaScript, you can get in there and you can take advantage of the animated APIs that we uh, provide for simple control, element playback, um, we actually have some super fantastic users that have been creating custom plugins for Animate uh, for CMS integration, sprite, cre uh, sorry, sprite sheet creation, data injection, uh, and advanced logging. And these are just a few of the things that you can do. So there are quite a few roles in the web industry, as you can see, that fall between these two ends of the spectrum. And I'm sure a lot of you in this room, if you are involved in the web, you, uh, you probably fall, um, you know, you overlap a few of these roles. And wherever you do land on here, you can find value in Animate to deliver content to the web. So HTML content is not just restricted to the web. You know, you think of a tool like Animate, and your first instinct is to think like, oh, yes, I can create motion on my website. Um, that's not all that uh, Animate is used for. Adobe has done a lot to invest in HTML to serve as a vehicle to deliver content not only the web, uh, but, for example, digital publishing as well. We have a really great relationship with the InDesign and DPS team, um, and we have been working with them over the past few months to be able to uh, bring your Animate content into InDesign so you can then deploy it using digital publishing. And it's a, it's a super great workflow, and it's really easy. You create your content in Animate, and then you can just drag and drop it into InDesign, and then you can build out your folios and use the folio producer to, uh, to deliver your content. We also allow you to export to iBox, um, iBooks Author as well, so if you want to create content that way, you can do the same drag and drop process through there. Uh, HTML is also making a name for itself in desktop applications. For example, I'm sure a lot of you know that with Windows 8, um, Microsoft is allowing users to create applications using HTML. And of course, there is mobile applications. Uh, we saw some really awesome stuff earlier with PhoneGap Build, uh, which uses the foundations of web technologies to be able to create applications. And with the scalable layout features I told you guys about before with percentage-based layouts, um, you can integrate with Reflow. You can also integrate with Dreamweaver. Uh, there's a few features in there. So you can create your content and animate, bring it into Reflow or Dreamweaver, and then you can, you know, you can use PhoneGap Build to create those mobile applications for you. Uh, so I am so proud and excited today that we have announced our Edge Animate 1.0 it has been an amazing road to get here. Um, we have so many dedicated users through the, uh, that have helped shape our product. A lot of you are in this room now that have helped made Animate what it is today, and we wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys. Uh, we also have an amazing Animate team. A few of them are here today uh, who you know, work sleepless nights creating a 1.0. It's, uh, it's an incredible process. But we have such a dedicated team of both our users and the people that work at Adobe, and for that, I sincerely thank all of you. 
Um, so we have a bright future ahead of us. There are such crazy things going on with HTML and CSS, like that, that demo that Vincent showed with you know, princess shaders and, and div and all that. Like, it's incredible to think that even two years ago, you know, that wouldn't have been able to be done without maybe using Flash or, uh, or a video effect. And I don't remember if Vincent explained, but that, that was all done using the technologies that they were describing, and it is just phenomenal. Um, and I am so excited that once these things become more standardized that we can integrate this stuff into Edge Animate because we are a tool delivering content to the web. This is what we do. We are dedicated to using the web platform to, do, to serve content. Um, so with that, I am... Oh. Okay, well, this is where you can get Edge Animate. They seem to have snuck one of my slides out. Um, but uh, after this demo, you can go to html.adobe.com and check out Edge Animate. Or if you are a Creative Cloud member, uh, you, can, uh, you can get Edge Animate on there as well. And it's free. But listen to Lee first before you go off and, uh, and start downloading things. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand over to Lee, who is going to give you a demo of, it, of Edge Animate and show you some of the really cool things that you can do with it. All right. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> So, so you're going to hang out, right? Oh, yeah, I'll hang out. Okay. I've got nothing that to do. That won't be awkward. <laughs> no. I can make it awkward. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. So how many, I'm just curious, <laughs> how many people here have actually used Flash before? Yeah, so a lot of people. Yeah, don't be shy about it. Be proud. Um, <laughs> so one of the things to, 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 to say up front is Edge Animate is not a replacement for Flash, but the way... Uh, w the web has evolved now is Flash has taken on a more specialized role. So if you're building a game or you're doing some advanced video stuff, Flash is still the best technology and frankly I don't think there's anything close to it for those use cases. But now with HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, a lot of the um, you know, general interactive content that's on the web, you can start to do using these technologies. And Edge Animate is actually very similar to what the way you've done things in Flash in the past. So I'm not going to import these like really like slick demo assets. I'm literally going to start from scratch in Edge and just show you how you create animation. So I'm just going to create a new document. And you can see up top here, so obviously I can import images and I can work with existing assets. But I can also create some here. Now, when we're talking about Edge, um, we're not working in some intermediate format like while we're, we're editing and then when we click publish, it's somehow converting it all into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You're working with that the whole time. So we have some drawing tools here and essentially what you're creating are HTML divs when you use these. So I'm just going to drag out a square here. Let me just make it black and just center this. So essentially, what I've just created is an HTML div. So if we actually look in the elements uh, panel here, we can see I have, uh, it's been by default called rectangle, and it is of type div. So now with that selected, we can see in the properties panel all of these various properties that I can set. And, I can, and essentially, if it's in that properties panel, that means I can also animate them. So when it comes to animating an edge, there are similarities to Flash. There's also a lot of similarities to After Effects. You can see even the interface and everything looks more like After Effects than it does like Flash. I think that was on purpose, right? That was on purpose. And yeah. we actually have spent quite a bit of time um, with the After Effects team. God love them. They are super patient with us. Uh, and we got a lot of inspiration from them, especially from our UI, as you can, uh, yeah. as you can see. So, I mean, I think even seasoned Flash developers will say After Effects has one of the best animation systems there are. Um, so again, I can come through and set all of these properties. And what's nice about Edge is you can see here I have an X and a Y property, and obviously I can adjust these properties. But what I'm actually setting are CSS properties. And if I hover, it's actually showing me what CSS property is being set. So we can see it's actually setting the left CSS property at a certain value. And I can also use CSS transforms to obviously scale this, um, and I can rotate it. And this is using, if I hover over it, the CSS transform um, functions. So now you'll notice that there's no 3D transforms in here yet. And that's because they're just not widely supported enough in different browsers. But I think maybe in the future, those could find their, their way in here. Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the things that we try to accomplish with Animate is that cross-browser experience. Um, so for something like 3D transforms, there isn't really a decent fallback to being able to use it. But as things get more standardized, like, yeah, definitely we want to 
we want to be able to get them in here. OK, cool. So now let's say I want to animate this rectangle. So uh, like Sarah mentioned, you can do uh, the regular type of animation that we do in Flash or After Effects. So we have this. It's auto keyframing. But there's an, easy, an easy, uh, even easier way to do it, and that's using the concept of the pin. Now, I will admit, when I first started with Edge, I was like, what is this thing? How do you do it? But it actually makes animation a lot easier. So if I turn the pin on, essentially, I have this separate handle, which I can move around, independent of the timeline. And what this means is all of the current settings on this rectangle, wherever this pin moves, those settings will be pinned to that time on the timeline, which means now that I have my timeline here, my playhead there, I can then drag that, let's say, off the stage. And we can see if I hit the space bar, the animation happened. And that's using the pin. So this also will work in the opposite way. So let's say I go down here to two seconds. I'm going to activate the pin again. This time, I'm going to pull it back here to that one second mark. And now any changes I make here will take effect. So I'm going to scale it up a little bit. And let's say I rotate it 180 degrees. And now let's play that. And we can see those animations happen um, you know, one after the other. And I can also select these, offset them a little bit. And like they showed in the keynote, I can choose from all these different easing equations. Um, I like ease out expo. And much like Flash, uh, when you're working in Flash and you want to actually test it, you can hit Command Enter. And it's actually going to launch it in the browser. So my resume has now been updated as an HTML5 animator now. Oh. That's all that it took. That's impressive. That's all that it took. Because <laughs> technically, it is, that is accurate. Um, but you can, see that you can see this really simple to do this type of animation. So now what I'm going to come back, let me go back to the tool. Um, we can also use the concept of symbols. And with symbols, essentially, it works just similar to Flash. Let's say I, I have some animation or some behavior. I want to encapsulate it in a symbol, which then I can reuse, I can duplicate, and treat it as a container. So all I have to do is to right-click on this and say Convert to Symbol. So you can see even some of the verbiage uh, that's used in here has been kind of taken from Flash, and I'm sure that's no accident, right? Well, there's, you know, there's a, definitely a lot of things that Flash has done right, symbols, of course, being one of them. So there's a few things that we don't really need to reinvent. I had to ask that question because I was taking a drink of water. <laughs> so I'm trying to make it seamless. You know, so. I'm good at but, stalling. Yeah. Because if I was really trying to do a good job, I wouldn't have called that out just then. <laughs> so it's kind of, um, anyway, so we have this symbol. Now, with this symbol, we can see, if we go into the library, that I now have it in essentially the, the symbols area of the library. Again, very common concept. So now I can actually copy and paste this. And let's say I want to change some of the properties. Let me change the rotation of this. Let me maybe scale it down, change the alpha. And I'll just do that a couple of times, copy and paste. And you can take this idea for your own website if you want. <laughs> He's an HTML animator. You should listen to him. I am. So OK, so now let me test this. And now you can see we have those three different symbols independently animating, but they are combined in that one composition. Now, there's, much like the pin is kind of unique, you can also do some unique stuff with symbols here on the timeline. So you can see we have this little. Um, playback mechanism. So I can say on this symbol, play it in reverse. On this symbol, I can say uh, play it in reverse, but actually drag it out here. So it, it kind of goes in normally and then goes into reverse. And we can see now how these different things will animate. So not only do we have those symbols on the timeline, but we can also, again, um, apply different uh, timeline effects to those uh, to play each of them independently. So that's pretty cool. So let me back up here a little bit, just so we get back to our one rectangle. So now what about actually adding interactivity and code to this? So again, much like Flash, if, you know, when you're starting out in Flash, you start out with timeline animation. But then as you get into more complex projects, you're like, well, I'm gonna, I have to incorporate some code into this. 
So the thing you might want to do is to, it, to actually put some code on the timeline at a certain trigger point in the timeline. So what I can do is, let's say, bring the playhead down here. And then we have this little actions uh, insert trigger command. And what this is going to do is allow me to put some JavaScript code that's going to be triggered at this point in the timeline. And we can see we get this code editor that actually comes up. So this is kind of a hover uh, code editor. But there's actually a better one if you go into Window Code. This pops open a persistent code editor, which I actually usually just dock uh, right here. So I just dock this code editor here. Then any, any of the, I almost said actions, action script. I almost said it. See, that's how similar they are. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not like this. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, but anyway, so here's the trigger at this point in time. Now, up until this time, I've been animating on the timeline. But let's say I wanted to now do some programmatic animation, let's say, using jQuery. So what I can do is, and we also, in this code panel, have all of these snippets. So what I want to do is to get to the actual HTML element so that I can to animate it with jQuery. So what I can say is essentially um, get symbol element. And this is actually going to get me to, actually, no, let me just, that's not right. I'm going to say get element. And what I'm going to do now is to get this rectangle. And we can see this has a name of rectangle. So I'm just going to put in that name. And that name could be anything, by the way. This is just the default. Uh, that it got. So what I want to do now is just to simply fade this out using jQuery. So now this element contains the actual jQuery uh, DOM element that I can actually animate. And I'm just going to use the jQuery fade out function. So there's the awesome animation. And then you can see it, it waited about a second until I hit that timeline trigger. And then it was able to actually animate it with code. Now, this one thing I want to call out about this editor, this is not the editor where you get, you're, from now on you're going to do all of your JavaScript coding. It's pretty basic, right? And that's on purpose, right? Yeah, that's definitely intentional. We're not looking to, uh, to replace any of the sophisticated editors out there, uh, like Brackets, for example, which is an awesome editor, um, even Dreamweaver. Uh, we're not that tool. We're made for creating your content, and we just right. help you along with this code editor. Yeah, but it is, it is good for simple scripts, and you can see if I put in a comma right there, it's actually giving me some um, simple error highlighting. So it's essentially telling me it's found this unexpected token here. Um, so it does give you some level of, of uh, error handling inside of here. So that's using a trigger. But let's say I want to, when I click on this uh, square, I actually want it to go off to a different URL. So now I can actually put ActionScript directly onto this div element. So you remember in Flash, we actually removed it, how you could select a movie clip and attach code actually to the movie clip. Uh, people were really upset when we got rid of that, actually. But um, you can do that same concept here in Edge. So with this uh, selected, I can actually either go here in the Properties panel to open Actions, or I can do it right from this Code panel. I can go to Stage. I'm going to add a trigger. I'm going to go to Elements, Rectangle. And here are all of the, essentially, events that we can respond to. So I'm going to respond to the click event for that rectangle. And I'm just going to put in some simple JavaScript. And of course, I'll make it go to HTML at Adobe.com. That's the site where all the action is. Right, Sarah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. First thing in the morning, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, no, seriously. Uh, <laughs> when I click. We can see now it goes to that site. So I'm able to now incorporate a couple of different scripting mechanisms. I can apply a timeline script. I can also put uh, event handlers directly onto here. So all right, see, most people are really slick. They have the notes down there. And then they kind like of, me? yeah. No, well, yeah. <laughs> well, you couldn't have a piece of paper. I have a piece of paper that I'm actually going to turn the page. Not very, not very professional. But, um, so, OK, so we're, we're doing this animation, but like, what is this actually producing? Like, so now let's actually look at what the final product is. So what I'm going to do is to save this project. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. I'll just create a folder for it. 
and I'm going to save it. And now when I run this in the browser, let's actually look at what it's produced. So if I actually look at the page source here, we have a, a couple of different options for export, but you can see at its very uh, lowest level, we essentially have a div here, which is the edge stage. And all of, the, all of the, the content and animation that I've been doing is actually in this JavaScript file, and it will be injected at runtime into this div. And the way to actually visualize that, if you look at the developer tools, we can see here that we have that stage. And inside of there, we have that rectangle that was created. And if we refresh this and open this up, we can see that it's actually animating these CSS properties, and that's actually happening from the JavaScript. So um, that's kind of the, uh, I guess, the, the dynamic way to do it, right, where it's injected. The other option that you have is static publishing. So if I go back now and I go to the publish settings, you can see, well, first of all, for output formats, we have the web. Then we also have this deployment package, and, and that is what's for InDesign, correct? Um, well, the, the deployment package, it um, it's produces an OAM file. Uh, that's an open AJAX metadata file. And originally, this started off with InDesign. Um, it's that container I mentioned before where you can drag and drop. Uh, but it started off with InDesign, but more applications are beginning to adopt it that can absorb HTML content. Uh, so the Dreamweaver integration that, um, that was mentioned earlier, that's going to use that package. Um, I imagine Reflow will use it once, uh, once it becomes publicly available, and uh, we're working with the Muse team to create integration with that. So as more and more applications can pick up HTML, that's where this package can be delivered. Yep, and then also you have iBooks uh, for OS X. So but when we go back to the web, again, right now we have kind of the default, which is that method where you have just a single div and then all the contents injected um, at runtime. But we can also do publish content as static HTML, um, and let me save this. And now if we look at this, we view the page source, or actually I need to publish it, right? So let me actually publish it and look inside of that folder. I'm going to open that in the browser. And we can see here that the, not only do we have the top level stage container, but we also have that div here. And essentially any of the elements that you create inside of Edge will actually have divs here um, actually in the markup. So it won't inject things uh, at runtime like that. If you don't mind if I step in for two seconds. Sure. Uh, this is where the accessibility comes in. Yep. I mentioned before, if you have text on your stage, it will get written out. Um, it'll get written out in that published file. If you've assigned like a header tags, h1, h2, et cetera, um, div tags, image tags, those all get written out with that static HTML output. Yeah, and then so uh, what a lot of people ask me is, so we also have this HTML5 output from Flash uh, CS6 now, and Grant Skinner's going to be up later to talk about that. So why, why would you use that or, or Edge? And really, um, what it comes down to right now is the output from Flash Pro is Canvas. So it's going to output the HTML5 Canvas. This is actually using CSS3 and JavaScript to, to, uh, to render, essentially. So really, the choice is, you know, uh, do you want to target Canvas or do you want to target a DOM CSS approach? And, that's, you know, that decision is based on the type of content. So if you wanted to build, let's say, uh, an ad or let's say an HTML5 game, that's more, I would say, targeted towards Canvas. And general animated web content uh, would be something that you would do in Edge. And also, you know, if you have Canvas, it's harder to, to do things like accessibility, um, which Edge is really good at. So we have this now. Let's say, you know, let's face it. This is ready to ship to the client. Um, <laughs> They have really low expectations. Uh, it's my kind of client. I don't really get clients who want like you know really cool stuff because it's just a lot of work. Um, so, um, so now essentially I have this stage. Now I can actually uh, go about and and set a couple of things up. So first off, I can take a poster image, um, which I can use to display for browsers that that don't support it. Like I think you said IE seven things like that. So let's say I wanted this to be a poster image. I can snap that, capture it, 
And now I can edit that down level stage. And the down level stage is essentially what's going to be displayed for people that, that, uh, wh whose browsers don't support the animations created in Edge. So I can essentially insert that, and that's what's going to be displayed. Now I can also add a preloader to this. Um, and so I, didn't, I, always, I wasn't exactly sure what immediate and polite uh, were, but actually, so immediate means it's going to immediately start downloading your edge composition. Polite is essentially, it's going to wait for the rest of the page to load. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. OK. So I say go with immediate. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, and we can, so it's essentially telling here the size of the preloader. I can insert some of this, uh, you know, some of these, these uh, preloaders that actually come with edge. You can also put in your own stuff. And essentially, that's how you set up a preloader. So it's, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, and that's it. So you publish it. And the end result, let's actually just look at what files get produced. Um, so we have a, a couple of different things. First, we have our HTML page. Um, and let me actually show you in the browser what this looks like. So I'm going to go to the developer tools. And if I look inside of here, we can see it's including jQuery, jQuery easing, and then the Edge runtime. So jQuery is built in to Edge. And it's used for things like the easing equations right, that are in jQuery, yeah. using to, to select things. Uh, any, any of those the main things? Um, pretty much. Um, you can also programmatically control your animation using jQuery inside yep. of the tool as well. Yep. So, um, but you'll also notice that we have this right here, this Edge Actions. And this is essentially um, putting that code that I wrote inside of Edge. It's actually being funneled into this JavaScript file. And if we look, um, let me go back to the tool. If we look in this code editor, we can see right here that, that all I'm seeing is this. But if we show full code, this is actually showing me what that entire JavaScript file is going to look like. Um, and we can see we have the, the other code that we created uh, you know, here as well. So if you want to see the code that's generated, you have an option to see that, or you can just uh, write code the way it is right here. So all right, I'm going to close this project. Of course, it'll be up on my GitHub page later. If you'd, uh, <laughs> you know you're going to fork this thing. Um, you're generous for sharing this with the community. Yeah, well, it's, it's all about giving. Um, so now what I want to show you is a little bit about text. So I'm going to create a new project. And when we're dealing with text, it's pretty simple. I have a text tool. I drag it out. I put in some text like that. And then I can set all of these various CSS properties for this text. So let's center align it. Let's say I want to increase the size of it here. And one of the things that's built into Edge is the ability to use web fonts. So we saw all of that great stuff this morning uh, about using web fonts. We can also use them directly here inside of Edge. So what I'm going to do is to go to Chrome. And I'm just going to go to Google Web Fonts really quick, because they have one that I like. So from here, I'm going to use this Ranchers font. Just click Quick Use. And if you've used Google Web Fonts before, you know it gives you this um, embed code to put into your website. So all I'm going to do is to copy that and then go back to Edge. And we can see in the library, we also have a fonts, essentially a fonts folder for custom fonts. So all I have to do is to click Plus and paste in that embed code that I got from uh, Google Web Fonts. And then now I actually put in my font list, so ranchers, and then I can give a fallback, let's say sans serif, like that. So now we can see I have it in my library. Now I can select my font, and we can see it now here in the font panel. And we can see I now have that web font, which I can use. Now one of the things about text is you know, we have all of these CSS properties that we can use. All of those things are also animatable. So I'm going to, to uh, implement my, turn on my pin here. And then if we click this, it's actually going to expand and show us uh, some other properties that are not uh, displayed right away. So I can do letter spacing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Line spacing. 
I do have to call you out on your taste yeah. in typography, by the way. Well, I don't, yeah. Ra yeah. <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> so now, we're back to 1999 right here. <laughs> no. So now what I'm going to do is, and, th and that's really just to show you that all of these properties are animatable. Please don't do that on your website. Um, but uh, and basically, anything that's in that properties panel can be animated. So another thing I want to show you, which is actually really cool about Edge, I will say, is a lot of different tools have like, oh, they have a help panel, or they maybe have some tutorials that takes you off to some weird website, or, or like, it just never, they're not really usable. I will say that these lessons that are on the home page are actually really, really helpful and useful, and actually are, um, I wish more of our tools actually had these things. So one of these things so yeah, um, is the resizable responsive stuff. So let's say I want to learn about that. I'm going to click this, and it essentially opens up this little panel, and it tells me step by step. All right, first click to open the sample. And this is a pre-made sample that exists uh, you know, that comes with Edge, and it actually takes you step by step. So first thing, test it in the browser. And I launch it, and here, you know, here it is. Then I go to the next step, and it's actually telling me to, oh, and change the actual width of the stage from pixels to percentages. So now I'm going to do that. I'm going to change the pixels to percentages. And now I have this little handle which I can adjust the size of the stage to preview what this is going to look like. And again, I can go and test this. And, and just uh, these walkthroughs are actually very, very helpful. Um, and definitely check these out if you're looking to kind of learn some of the, the concepts that, that, uh, that Edge provides. So yeah, good job on that feature. Thank you. Yeah. I built it myself. Did you really? No, I did yeah. not. I built that sample, though. Oh, you did? <laughs> That's a nice So I, I, I do contribute sometimes. So, and, and, you know, one of the things that people ask me is like, eh, yeah, 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 you can animate this. Why am I going to use this? Like, wh why, wh what am I actually going to use Edge for in the real world? So the only limit is your imagination. See that? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to show you an example of something that absolutely could be done in Edge. So. Um, how many people here watch Breaking Bad? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Breaking Bad. So I'm going to go to the AMC website. Yep, they don't, dish customers are out of luck. And they don't have any, they don't uh, mince words about telling people about it either. <laughs> so one of the things, so I was on my iPad, and, I, and I, I was looking at the Breaking Bad website, and I, and I go to the section for games. And there's this D, uh, DEA evidence board. And it's this Flash application that essentially allows me to you know, go through some of the evidence. So we have this little board. It allows me to click on individual items. It will zoom in so I can get a closer look at it. Right. Um, so obviously, on the iPad, all I'm seeing is a, a black rectangle. So I'm not seeing anything. So yeah, uh, that's just the way it is. So now if I click on one of these, we can see I, I click on Gus Fring. Uh, it's allowing me to, to, uh, you know, to go in. I can double click to zoom out. I can go in and look at the different parts of this. So this is something that absolutely uh, doesn't need to be done in Flash anymore. This kind of simple things where you're transitioning, you're exploring content. Now, obviously, you know, this example gets a little more complicated once you drill in. But even these, I mean, that flip, you, know, you, could, you could easily do that using CSS now. So I actually created, um, you know, kind of did a little bit of a version of this for how it would be done in Edge. And I just want to show you this. So we go here. So this is the same thing, but in an, in an Edge composition. So I'm actually able to click on these things. I can click to go to the, you know, different parts of it. I can click on the board to zoom out, you know. What kind of a man talks to the DEA? No man, you know. No man. Uh, ring, ring, ring. You know, you have to watch the show. But you can see this this type of, of smooth animation is all happening with using Edge and and uh, and the animations that are built into Edge. Now, as a Flash developer, how would I go about creating this? And it's actually the same way that I did it in Edge. So let me show you what that project actually looks like. 
So where is it? So if I, you know, if I was going to build something like this in Flash, what would I do? I'd have a top-level movie clip that contained the board, and then inside of that, it would, you know, would have each of the individual, you know, movie clips for the for the photos. I'd listen for a click event on those, and then I'd move that top-level container around. And that's the same thing that I did in Edge. So we can see here, all there is on the main timeline is this symbol, which is the entire board itself, right? So inside of that symbol, if I double click, and again, I'm using Flash terminology, I'm going to double click to go into edit mode. I mean, this is the same. I don't think double click is native to Flash. You can, you can oh. double click anywhere. No? See, that's how, that's how I don't get out that often. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can see now here, the actual size of the symbol is pretty large, right? And inside, I actually have individual symbols for each of these elements. So that already is very similar to the way I'd be used to working in Flash. Now, when it comes time for the code part of this, look, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. Coming from a Flash background, using jQuery to animate things around, eh, it's possible, I know. Um, I prefer to use something I already know. So uh, there's a great tweening library called Greensock. Many of you might know Tween Lite, Tween Max, all that type of stuff. Also available in JavaScript now. So if I actually look, and let's, let's just look at this Gus Fring clip here. Um, so first, I'm just getting a, a, a reference to that element. But then I'm actually using tween max to actually animate this. And the tween max code is exa almost ex exactly how I would be coding this inside of Flash. So it's the same concepts. You know, when I click on Gus Fring, I'm actually scaling that whole board movie clip up to 1.2, adjusting its uh, position. Then when I click on the actual board itself, I'm zooming back out to 0.5 scale. Um, it's all of those same concepts that I'm used to using um, we're able to use inside of Edge. So the thing to, to avoid is to try to compare the two directly, like, oh, I could do that better in Flash, or yeah, but that's, it's dead, and yeah, da, 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 da. No, use the right tool for the right job. It couldn't be simpler. Use the right tool for the right job, and you're going to be asked to do things in HTML. You, you're just going to be, right? I mean, it's you know certain things they people want them to run on devices in the browser. So you have to know how to do this type of stuff. Um, this example actually runs beautifully in the iPad on the browser because these CSS things are actually hardware accelerated. Um, so this performance that you're seeing right here in Chrome is the same performance that you would see in the browser on the iPad as well. So what was the whole point of this, this demo? Well, I'm going to tell you. It was to say, look, it's, to do this type of stuff, it's the same concepts that you've been doing forever in Flash and even in After Effects. Um, and Edge makes it really easy to, to transition and start to do these things using web standards. So I, I think you've done an excellent job with this tool, you and the rest of the Edge team. Oh, thank you. They're you know, sitting I, right over there. So oh, they are? Thank you guys, yeah. too. So. <laughs> Yeah, and it's free, right? It's free. Like, right. that's insane. It's free. We're Adobe, and we're giving you free stuff. There's so much free, awesome stuff today. See, the, the one thing we didn't talk about is, like, we don't have, like, a smooth outro, because I think we're done, right? Well, that, that was my slide that uh, I kind of botched oh, yeah. when okay. I was talking about there. So, yeah, if you are a, I'll, I'll reiterate, if you are a Creative Cloud member, um, you can download Edge Animate from the cloud, or, uh, and to learn more, check out that link on there, that's the html.adobe site that is uh, both of our home pages that we are just on all the time. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.